G'day guys, welcome back to the channel again. Today, we've got a new video for the Duramax series. Let me know what you think about it in the comments once you've watched it. Give it a thumbs up if you like it, and let's get straight into it. You know, after many hours, the uh, intercooler's all mounted up. Everything's nice and close, there's not much gap in there. I've got a little spot in there, which I was going to put my trans cooler in, but ended up not doing it. Couldn't mount it solid enough. And also, there's enough room in there to put a thermo on it. So I'm going to put a thermo behind the intercooler so I can draw a bit of air through, as well as the mechanical fan. I've got my power steering cooler here. That was a kit from Nishimoto that comes with a thermo fan on it. I'm doing that because uh, my power steering pump will be running my brakes. So it's doing the job of two things. So if it get cooling, that's good. So now well, that's all mounted up, brackets all done, painted, everything. Got the brackets under there as well. I've started on the intake hot side cooler. Got to here so far. I think it's gonna be many hours. Got some pie cuts to chuck in if I need to. So yeah, wish me luck. But uh, we get it. It's good. I'm pretty happy with it so far. So good. hot side cooler pipe all done up to the turbo probably put a bracket off the head there on there just to make it a bit more solid but yeah pretty happy with it turned out excellent now let's go to the cold side okay so i've come across a bit of a problem with doing my cold side the intercooler piping but i reckon we'll get around it i think i've got a way so as you can see I've got a welding coop on there I've made that's 25 mil long, so I can actually put a hose clamp on it that I've rolled a bead onto. The only problem with that is, pie cuts get a nice tight radius, but as you can see, it sits up pretty tall. That alternator already won't clear the bonnet. So I have to clearance the bonnet to get that to fit. Now, with it sitting all the way up there, you can tell I might have to be cutting all the way through the bonnet, which I'm not too too keen on I dare say. So I tried that with a 45 on it and it sits up pretty tall. Like, look at that, I can't really have that. So that one's out of the picture. I thought I'd try just the standard one times D bend, but same deal, sits up pretty tall and that's because they've got a 30 mil leg length on them. But then I remembered I had and I bought a one times D bend and they don't have legs on them that's good it works in my favor but the only problem is i try to roll a bead on it but see it sits down a lot lower than the rest it can't roll a bead on it because it's on the radius and it just can't form anything but that's okay so what i've done is 
to get by that is I found some quarter inch stainless bar and I went down to one of the other sheds where I've got a roller and I've just rolled it around to the general radius of a three inch bend. What I'll do is I'll cut some sections out of it and I'll weld it in four spots with, def with decent sections on it. So then I've got a bit of a bead for it, for the hose clamp to bite onto. So that's what I'm gonna do to get around this. I'm still gonna have to clearance the bonnet, but it is what it is, but that'll definitely get me out of trouble. Then I uh, sort of had a bit of an epiphany, and I remember I had a welding coupon that I made. I cut it on a bit of an angle, put a couple of pie cuts in there, and I'll put it down for as low as I'm ever gonna get it. I'd like it lower, but it is what it is. After a bit of twisting and turning, that'll do, I reckon. So that'll be my intake. Oh mate, I'm all about standing by here and making sure you're doing it right. So I thought I'd just show my face for a quick minute rather than being behind the camera. And um, we're just going a quick rundown of where we've got to this afternoon and um, what we're going to do from here on out. So Tommy's going to give us a quick quick rundown on where we've got to and then we'll go from there. So I've got um, up to the wire bridge. It's uh, pretty good so far. It's all tacked together except for here. That takes good for 30 PSI by the way. Um, won't fail. Nah, it won't fail. Oh, I've got it down to here. I'm still waiting on a couple extra bends so I can finish it off, so I can get to the cooler, but it is what it is. But yeah. Should be right. I think so. Yeah, so you can see that at the moment, this is all taxed uh, as a rough mock of, of what's gonna happen. And then it runs down to normally where the washer bottle would sit, that's going to sort of have to be relocated slash uh, modified. And then we just need to get those bends. So down the bottom here where we come out towards the cooler, we can come from here around here and sort of uh, make our way. So it's a little bit tricky uh, this side compared to the hot side. So uh, get those couple extra bits and then hopefully we'll be cooking. Yeah, it's a bit harder with bigger pot compared to the other side. Yeah, so we'll be back tomorrow and uh, catch you then. Alright guys, so before we get too far, um, we just started tonight to uh, weld the cold side. Um, Tommy's already started welding, so you can see we've started uh, from down the bottom here, working our way slowly through. Uh, it sort of gets more difficult as we get to the part where we're going towards our intake, but 
I'll slowly get in there. We'll be done soon. <laughs> nah. Nah. <laughs> but, yeah, so before we started, um, we didn't really get to show the mock up, but Tommy just went through and tacked from the intake side through down to the bottom where we're meeting another uh, 90 degree, which goes down into the intercooler. So, we'll get this done and then we'll be pretty sweet. So, let's get back to it. <laughs> side all welded up. Tommy's done another cracking job on doing that. Uh, it's come up really good. So let's go have a quick look at it before we finish up for the night and let's get out of here. 